Hello, and it's time for our next episode on biological weapons and how to protect yourself from them, or biological threats. But this is one you won't be able to protect yourself from, but it's mostly theoretical, thankfully. Well, we hope so. So, what we're going to look at today is a thing called the Chimera virus, or the Chimera virus. And this was something that the Soviets supposedly came up with, but it's also quite a theoretical thing, so it's a thing sort of any nation could kind of try and design. Uh, so the story goes that during, I think it was the 70s or 80s, the Soviets were trying to come up with um, sort of an insanely effective virus at killing their enemies. And the idea was that you mix several viruses together, or several bacterias together, and it would be something that would have the traits of some of them, you know, and not the others and things like that. So the one you hear a lot about was Ebola, I think, mixed with smallpox or something like that. And the idea was that you had something like... Um, as nasty as Ebola is, sort of vomiting and, you know, having bloody diarrhea and everything like that, vomiting blood and all stuff like that, with quite high fatality rates, but something that would spread almost as effectively as the common cold, or a flu. So you would have something that pretty much everybody would be guaranteed to get, and then the fatality rates would be insanely high. So the idea was that you'd splice all these different infections together, each, you know, having different traits. And the idea was as well with these sort of viruses that you'd give them a quarantine period um, or sort of a dormant period so that if people were infected with it they'd feel absolutely fine for maybe a week or something but were still able to spread the disease so it'd make it very hard to actually, you know, just immediately stop people because if everybody all of a sudden, you know, is coughing blood everywhere or sneezing blood, vomiting blood um, you know, as soon as they come into contact with somebody else who has that infection it'd be much easier to quarantine it you know, have armed guards or something wearing all the CBR in gear block people in. But uh, the idea was that, you know, for weeks nobody would know they'd have it, and then all of a sudden the symptoms come on and they die very quickly, but at that point they've spread it to everybody. And this was something supposedly that the Soviets who designed this had then actually said, this is very bad, we must destroy this. So whether or not you believe it existed in the first place um, really, you know, is up to interpretation, but the idea, the thing the sort of story goes that they created something so dangerous and deadly that they were really scared to just have it sitting around somewhere because you know if it got out it could be the end of life on earth and then they destroyed their stockpiles but the point is of this is that the idea isn't really new that any nation really of the sort of biological you know um I guess setups laboratories I don't know how you'd actually refer to it could try and design something like this, and the idea of splicing infections together isn't, you know, as I'm saying, particularly new. There's lots and lots of horrible diseases where you could take uh, something that's very fatal and then combine it with something that's very contagious. Because thankfully, lots of very fatal diseases aren't all that contagious. They're, you know, um, sort of hard to get, but once you get them, you're a bit doomed. And there's lots of things that can make you feel a bit crappy, like a cold and a flu. Um, I mean, I know flu is borderline where it can be very deadly, depending on what strain it is, but. You know, the point is that lots of diseases you can catch very easily from breathing infected air, airborne diseases, you know, people sneezing in a public transport kind of thing. They're the diseases that generally, apart from maybe pneumonic plague and Spanish flu, aren't all that deadly. But then you've got, obviously, diseases that are much harder to spread. Often, you know, like bodily fluid exchange, things like that. Um... So, yes, I suppose you could even have weaponized AIDS. I know that sounds almost like a joke, but I'm I'm sure that was probably looked into at some point by one of these superpowers. So, yeah, it's quite scary stuff, Chimera virus, just simply for the fact that it's where you can have all these very different diseases in a lab spliced together and then made into a bioweapon. And obviously it's much, much harder to treat something like that than it is... Um, you know, like a very general sort of disease, you don't even know it's coming and then it's too late. Funnily enough, the BBC series Survivors that we were talking about on a few of the streams, I was talking about on Weapon Collector streams and lots of other people brought it up as well, that I think was meant to be sort of a chimera virus where the Chinese had come up with some sort of biological weapon that got loose and then wiped out 99% of Earth uh, human life. But, you know, the idea isn't that far-fetched in the sense that if you had the right equipment and training, I'm sure it's not too hard to get samples of something in a lab, grow it in a Petri dish, and then unleash it. 
Um, Unit 731 kind of attempted stuff like this in Japan, which is something I'll get onto in more detail in a later video. Um, but they did lots of plague spreading activities and things like that. But there we go. Uh, this is, yeah, the Chimera virus. I said this is more of a theoretical one. I'm not going to even say how would you protect yourself from it because it was a doomsday weapon. You wouldn't survive if it got unleashed. I mean, maybe if you wanted to sit 24 7 in the CBRN environment, you know, like filtered environment, uh, never leave, then you might be alright. But you don't even know how long the bacteria is going to stay around for, or the virus is going to stay around for, because that's the scary thing with some of these things. Is that, like somebody I think put in a comment yesterday on my Amphrax video, or, you know, because I don't put these videos up in the order I film them, just to let you know, well, that's why my hair sometimes goes short and long uh, between videos if I rearrange the order. Um, somebody did say, like physically yesterday when I was reading the comments, that, um, you know, Amphrax supposedly lasts around 100 years which is crazy, you know, so if you contaminate somewhere with anthrax, it takes a hundred years to naturally die off, unless, you know, it's destroyed of harsh chemicals and things like that. So, you know, even if you did survive the initial infection where everybody was coughing and sneezing and spreading a horrible sort of chimera virus to each other, would that virus then be engineered to sit around for absolutely ages afterwards? I mean, I suppose if you were invading the country afterwards, probably not, but, you know, it does make you think. So anyway, chimera virus, um... Yeah, scary, sort of horrible thing. Hopefully, uh, you know, something like that will never get made, because if it does, it's the end of the world. But yeah, it's quite um, an interesting thought that that could be weaponized, straining different viruses or bacteria together to make a doomsday weapon.